and welcome to today's new pick a card video. If you are new to my channel, I am the Hermit Tarot and this is my free tarot card reading channel here on YouTube. If you are returning, welcome all the same. So lovely to have you here again. Why am I rhyming? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I'm rhyming, but okay. Now, I had a pretty big weekend, you guys, um, and not in terms of like <laughs> I just had a lot going on. My mother t had her beautiful birthday on Saturday and I had family around me and I've lost my voice a little bit, um, but I'm <laughs> not as bad as I was and I'm here to do another video, but if you are noticing it, I, I didn't even notice it till I started to press the film button because I don't usually talk this much as when I'm filming but if you do notice a slight change in my voice that is why <laughs> it's still recovering I've got to be gentle with it I've got to be kind with it and just take time recovering it so welcome to today's video today's reading is going to be what is the truth of your connection you versus them now the funny thing about the truth is that it can differ depending on which side of the coin you sit on so I thought, you know what, let's do a reading like this. I haven't done a reading like this in a while and I don't really do them often either. Um, we're going to have person A, person B, you versus them. Now it is a general reading though, so keep in mind that I might be talking about you, but maybe your situation is reversed. And the reason that that will happen is because there's only going to be a select number of groups and naturally speaking, thousands of people are going to be watching this. So just take whichever side resonates most. If you resonate more with the person B side, then maybe you're actually person B and that the person who you're in this connection with is person A. You know, I hope that's not too confusing, but it comes back to that same message. Take what resonates. Do not let the rest take from you. So we are going to be asking spirit, what is the truth of this connection from your point of view, from their point of view? And then we're going to be getting advice and some channeled messages. It's going to be a pretty big reading. Um, so at this point in time, I'm not sure how many um, groups I will have, but I'll do my best to get honest, clear messages for all of the groups that I choose to do. Just make sure that you take that time to pick your correct group, tune into your intuition and make sure that um, you're, yeah, you're happy with the group that you select, whether you need more time at the meditation portion um, or whether you just want to pause the video and do your own weird, wild, wonderful method as well. I do have a few quick little updates. I don't want to take up too much time in this intro because I've got to be sensitive of my voice, but um, two updates. I announced last week that I am officially finishing with Patreon. So August will be my last month on Patreon and then I'll be taking time away from memberships in general. It was honestly just starting to become a very stressful situation having to manage that many people and that many different people's expectations as well. So I'm going to definitely be missing it because it was a beautiful community and there's so many beautiful souls in there. And I'm just very grateful for the fact that Patreon helped me make the Hermit Tarot a full-time um, business as well, which is something that I I never thought about going into this. You know, I'm very, very, um, well, I'm a Capricorn, so <laughs> I'm very ambitious, but I'm just very grateful for how it's all come about and Patreon has been a massive role behind that. Without Patreon, there were months where I wouldn't have been able to produce content on YouTube or Instagram. So I'm very grateful for it, but it's definitely time to lessen that load of responsibility and, and start focusing more on some other aspects, which I'm very excited about. So um, that is technically the only update that I have for you now. I will still be doing extended readings in future, but they will be rentals. So you could hire them from a platform that I'm currently working with. There'll be more about that in future though. So I just wanted to update you on that just in case you're thinking about joining. Um, you do need to know that there's going to be no September um, from August 31st, 11.59 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, I will be deleting my Patreon page and that'll be the end of that wonderful chapter. So, oh, not going to lie, that put me in my feels on the weekend. So I'm happy to be back here and that's probably why I was 
went a bit too hard with the laughing and the joking around with people. I was just looking for a raised vibration opportunity and lost my voice in the process. So <laughs> anyway, thank you so much if you've watched up until now. I'm going to take you into the pick a group portion of your video now where you can choose between the groups and then following that will be a meditation portion if you need more time. Otherwise, if you know which group you're feeling most called to, timestamps are down below. You can always jump ahead. Okay, so welcome everybody to the pick a group portion of today's reading. Um, we've got three groups to choose from today and I've got these little interesting, <laughs> we've got cards to help you choose your group as well as um, some little pool kind of accessories. I recently got a pool table so I got these little, these little goodies from them and I don't know what they are. I think they're just like little accessories that come from the company so <laughs> I'm not sure what they are but they have little identifying numbers on them so I'm going to flip over each card and each accessory so that you can hopefully figure out which of these three groups you're feeling most called to. So group one, your accessory has the number one on it. All of them are the same in the sense of they all have the white at the front and then they've also got the red at the back. Now your card this is a um, affirmations card by Dreamy Moon. I have the link to the deck on Tarot Stack below. It's Tarot Stack, excuse me. Your card says, I maintain alignment with my source energy. So we have the number one for group one, and we also have this card, I maintain alignment with my source energy. So that's group one. Group two, you literally have the number two come out for you, okay? And um, your card, let me flip it over, says, I am in perfect balance. So, and all of these are chosen by spirit. I shuffled and I reached in the bag. I didn't mean for this to happen, but it's quite um, fitting, really, that group two has got the scales of balance. So that's group two. Oh, excuse ya. We have group three next. Now, you're not going to believe this. No, you didn't get the number three, but you did get the number 13. So <laughs> spirits put the number 13 with group three, and the card for group three is I'm at home in my body. So we're looking at the number 13 and the affirmations card, I am at home in my body for group three. So those are the three groups. If you need more time, you're welcome to pause the video or if you want, you can meditate with me for a minute in the next clip. It's just a quick one minute meditation to help tune you in to your natural flow and help you figure out which of these three groups you're feeling most called to. When you're ready, timestamps are down below. I shall see you in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point, I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with the rest in mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number maybe an object that I showed you. It could be a specific color. It could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. 
group one. Welcome. If you guys had the number one pool accessory thing, as well as the card that says I maintain alignment with my source energy, then this is going to be your video. So we're going into what is the truth of your connection, you versus them. So we have a lot to cover. I'm hoping that I have enough room to lay all these cards out. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I hope you didn't skip. We're going to be asking spirit for um, person A versus person B answers. So what this means is, excuse me for shaking the camera. I'm trying to sort of make it more balanced because if you can't tell, it's on a little bit of a slant. Is that better or worse? That's a little bit worse, isn't it? Kind of needs to go that way. Sorry, group one. <laughs> I usually have that figured out before I press play. Um, if you if you did skip the intro, we're going to go with person A, person B. Um, so take whichever side resonates most because it's a general reading. You may find that you resonate with the person who I might be describing as them. Okay, so just flip it if that's the case. Now, group one, please, spirit. What is the truth of their connection, group one? Can we get the truth from person A's side? What is the truth of this connection from person A's side? We have the emperor. Okay, so there's a masculine energy here. What is the truth of this connection from person A's side, please, spirit? We have the eight of swords showing up in the reverse. It's also a little bit of a blockage to this person, though. Interesting. Now, I'm not using my light today, so the cards may... Um, have it like the camera may have a hard time focusing, but I've just been a bit over the false lighting. I like natural lighting, so I'm going back to that for now. We have the Daughter of Wands as well. Interesting. We also have the Five of Swords reversed. And we also have the um, nine of Wands. I'm going to get one more card for the Daughter of Wands, please, Spirit. We have the... Okay, there's a lot of fire over here with this Daughter of Wands. I'll keep it out because it's all painting a picture. All right, bottom deck energy for this person is the Seven of Swords. Now, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to pause this video because I've got to fix up the camera. It's annoying me that it's off... It's not in alignment, if that makes sense. Like there's this, ugh. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, so, gosh, Seven of Swords at the back here. So person A in this connection is having a hard time trusting the situation. Person A feels somewhat defeated by the lack of clear information here. Person A is wanting to take more control back. In fact, they're in a very masculine energy. But just because they have this drive for stability and um, assertiveness, it doesn't mean that they're not going to be prone to taking risks. In fact, person A is feeling especially spontaneous to the point where they're acting out of character at the moment. Person A's frustration towards the connection is more on a mental level, which means I feel like this person is not thinking clearly whether this resonates as you or them. Person A is struggling with the lack of clarity around the situation and they're doing what they can with what they've got, which is still somewhat deflective and not 100% in, in um, how do I word this, in authenticity if that makes sense there feels to be a sneaky energy here and the sneaky energy is almost like this person running from themselves it feels like this person is afraid of confronting the truth as they know it this person is having to take care of themselves it's almost like that feeling of who can who can outdo each other with the most amount of lies um, person a feels as though person b is not being honest with them so person a is also not being honest with themselves and pretending to lead a very spontaneous happy lifestyle but their actions don't equate to clear thinking and i see a little bit of self-sabotage in person a's energy um, because of this frustration person a just wants to know the truth person a just wants to get the honest truth out of the situation. So I can tell you that the truth from person A's point of view is that they are frustrated. They don't want to give up on the connection. They're feeling as though they don't have all the right informations. They're wanting things to move forward, but they're pushing, pushing, pushing forward so much 
that they're not really paying attention to um, what the situation is telling them. It feels like this is the pusher. This is the, the person who's chasing. This is the person who's trying to really make this happen for the connection. And this person is aware of the fact that this connection is not really going well. Person A is seeing the connection as a journey and he doesn't have a lot of patience or faith in letting things unravel naturally. This person is more keen to get things going now so that the spark doesn't die in the connection. Chasing and pushing is person, person A's energy. Person, listen to me, person A's energy. Now, this comes from a, a firm, again, a firm grip of wanting to know the truth. What is the truth here? What is the truth? And I think that it may be to a fault. I feel like person A may be um, self-sabotaging by, by focusing on information that isn't relevant or helpful to the situation because spirit's indicating that this person isn't thinking or cl seeing clearly by focusing on information that isn't helpful and by taking actions that aren't helpful. So person A's situation is very interesting and unfortunately I see some action being taken here that could be harmful towards the connection rather than helpful with the Son of Wands temperance reversed and the Ace of Wands reversed over here. This tells me that this person is not as experienced as they would like to be in this situation, um, but they're not going to give up and they're going to try to continue to keep the spark alive at all costs to the point where um, the actions don't necessarily make sense. I feel like this is also a ambivalence, like because there's a, such a lack of clarity, person A is at a point where they're just doing things for the sake of like trying to bring some sort of alignment back, which comes back to this card. I maintain alignment with my source energy. Person A is really trying to do that. Person A is afraid of, of um, really losing alignment, is, is trying to, I feel like person A is so desperate for a new beginning for themselves, for the connection. Um, person A is just really wanting the zest and purpose and, and fire in their life to, to not wane and to not go out. So that's where person A is at the moment. That's their truth in this connection. Let's see what person B's truth is now. Person B for group one, please, spirit. What is person B's truth in this connection? Okay, so person B is not doing any better. But we've got the Ten of Swords coming out first. We also have the Six of Swords as a blockage, but we'll show it in reverse. We also have the King of Wands in my hand. What else can you tell us about person B in this situation, Spirit? Spirit wants us to know that the Two of Wands is reversed. We also have the Queen of Cups reversed. So we've got a queen and a king over here. And we also have the Badass Being card. So if you're familiar with my channel, I leave this card in this deck for a very specific reason. Bottom deck energy in this deck is Temperance reversed. Okay, so Person B isn't doing a heck of a lot better, but Person B is definitely able to see the situation a lot clearer in the sense of Person A seems to be very fixated on Person B and the lack of clear answers that they're getting from Person B. Person B instead is very fixated on themselves and the lack of action that they've taken for themselves when it comes to this connection. I want to start with the Ten of Swords over here and the Two of Swords. The Ten of Swords and the Two of Swords, uh, excuse me, Two of Wands. This tells me that this person is, is very done with the way that things are going. This person is like, you know what, let's just what we're doing right now isn't working. This tough cycle needs to end. It's hurting me. I feel betrayed by my own actions, by the connection. I just need to end this cycle and start something new. With the two of wands reverse, this person is very set on doing things differently. It's like they've already thought about certain... They Actually, I want to say that this person doesn't really know how to do this but they know that they can't do the same things. It's like the process of elimination for person B here. They don't know where to next, but they know what they don't want to do next. 
And the interesting thing is you both have temperance reversed in your spread. So you're both having a hard time reconciling the energy in this connection and figuring out how to make this connection work. And this person, it's for that to be their bottom deck energy, I feel like they are pulling energy back from this connection. Person B is purposefully pulling energy back from this connection, whereas person A is aware of that and is trying to push energy back into the connection. Um, person A feels as though person B is lying to them and person B is just aware of the fact that it can't keep going on like this. I see that person B has spent time to try to, it's like they've been spending time reflecting on their actions specifically. Not so much like conversation or communication, although I, I wouldn't doubt if person B is not talking much at all with the Ten of Swords here, which is why person A seems to be so frustrated. It's like person B has gone on silent mode, you know, their phone's on airplane mode and nobody's heard from them in a while. Person B is, is just keeping to themselves. And I want you to know that person B is keeping their circle small in general. Their circle is very small for the Six of Swords to be reversed. This person is having to heal and address some sort of emotional issue with someone that they really look up to and have a lot of love for um, but whatever this is it's something that is consuming a lot of their um, mind and a lot of their um, time in terms of their actions they're spending a lot of time um, with this person this queen of cups person when it comes to the connection it feels like this person is almost like pulling their energy away from the connection to feed it into this person instead. Now, person B, this may not necessarily be like a another relationship. It feels like it is someone that they love a lot, though. They really care about this person, and their energy is very much focused on this emotional issue. Um, it could even be them trying to heal themselves if they've been through something recently, you guys. But person B is not feeding energy into this connection on purpose because the connection wasn't working for them and communication became very difficult there was a feeling of betrayal here and they're having to be very selective over who they um, talk to and who they choose to spend time with and in terms of who that is it's a very selective few like for the six of swords to be reversed I would consider it to be only like two people two or three people you know like very small social circle over here for person B and the reason behind this is that they're very aware that they can't do this forever this isn't a forever thing person Person B is in damage control mode, survivor mode. They're having to console this emotional issue and then they're wanting to have a um, rebirth situation within themselves. They're wanting to come back and project a strong, confident image with the King of Wands here. Person B is very ambitious and they are addressing the fact that what they're doing now needs to be rectified. They need to face the major issues in their life now so that it can be resolved ASAP so that they can get back on their um, horse and keep riding it to the sunset. I see with the King of Wands here that when it comes to this connection, uh, there is a level of optimism, okay, despite person B's energy pulling back, okay, I see that they are open, but they're in planning mode, unlike person a over here who's wanting to be assertive and action orientated person b has pulled back on purpose this is like the runner this is the pull energy pulling away and they are trying to just get their confidence back they're trying to get their zest back they're in planning mode of how do i get to this point again where i feel like a badass being full of life love and possibilities because i don't feel like that at the moment and i need to look confident i need to feel confident if I can make anything in my life successful, let alone my connection with person A. So this person has purposefully withdrawn their energy because they are recuperating and they're solving this emotional issue as well as dealing with this feeling of betrayal and having to restructure and replan their future based on what the present circumstances have given them. It's like out of nowhere, the world just, the universe was like, here's your box full of junk. You have to sort this and you have to sort it before you can have any goodness back in your life. And person B was like, oh my gosh, you're joking, really? So that's what they have to do right now. They're focusing on sorting that box so that they can go back into that flow of creation and, and really making those power moves that they want to do. When
when it comes to this connection this person is still attracted to that person but their heart is elsewhere right now their heart is with these close people trying to sort this issue out trying to clear that blockage so that they are more available for other people in their lives when it comes to person a they're very 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 determined to the point where they're almost taking the situation too personally person a is looking at it as why isn't person b paying me attention what have i done wrong why have i failed i can't fail failure is not an option um, you're, this person's taking it way too personally. This situation is bigger than the connection. Person B is having to heal something that is needing to be addressed ASAP. Otherwise, it's just going to snowball into more issues. And it feels like it's with someone that they really love. I felt like it was a mother, but it could just be like anybody else. It could be children. It could be, you know, siblings. It could be a best friend. It could be someone like a, a pet even. But whatever it is, they have to deal with it first before they can feed any energy into other people. So that's the situation here. Let's get some channeled messages now. We're going to go back to you as the viewer. So Spirit, can we get channeled messages for the viewer of this video from their person? Regardless of person A, person B, I'm getting channeled messages for you from this person, okay? So group one, please, Spirit. What does group one's person want to tell them? What does group one's person want to tell them? Yeah, I never imagined so much perfection. This is my nine of pentacles reversed. So goshness me, there is an insecurity here within this person. Your person is currently trying to get security back. Now, this insecurity could be about their physical appearance, but sweets, I think it's got to do with a lot more than that. The pentacles are very much about your livelihood. And Lord, when I turned on the news today, I just... My heart broke. There is so much happening around the world right now. And if your person is impacted by the natural disasters or the politics or the virus or the fires, anything that's going on around the world right now, that is what they're trying to deal with. They're trying to deal with something in their tangible world that is a blockage towards their security. This could be a home security. They, they might be struggling to have a safe place to sleep tonight. It could be um, a security in terms of their appearance, you know, but whatever it is, they're very focused on rectifying this feeling of security so what else does person one's person one's oh my gosh what else does group one's person want to say to them please spirit we have i'm obsessed with your body so yeah this person is it's not that they're not okay because there is attraction in your group there is attraction on both sides in your group there is a lot of um desire on both sides but the person your person excuse me group one is currently trying to break away from attachments to things that are unhealthy. Now, this could be talking about appearances. It could be talking about going for the most attractive situation because of how it will make other people envious. Now, that's a very... I mean, I, I think we can all somewhat relate to that energy, whether we've experienced it personally or whether we've seen other people go through it. But that is a form of attachment. It's not even the idea of I like shiny things. It's that idea of I like shiny things because of how it makes other people feel. This person is trying to reduce that attachment to doing things for what other people see or what, how other people will perceive them. I feel like this I'm obsessed with your body is this person just trying to release their attachment to face value things not really wanting to be so present and so like um, image obsessed. I feel like this person may be just laying low or not, not really showing what's going on because they're trying to detach from that need to constantly show people what they look like today or what they've been doing today. I feel like for many of you, it's not going to resonate with everyone, but especially if your person is person B, they're purposefully staying away from certain social media because they don't want people to see what they're going through and they don't want people to feel obliged to maintain those expectations, if that makes sense. Of like, oh, what are you doing today? What are they doing today? <laughs> Let's check so-and-so's story. I feel like they're trying to do to detach on purpose. We also have they're waiting for you. So yeah, your person is in an energy of observing. And I feel like this person is very much like 
passive, passively just chilling and, and waiting for either you to take action or the universe to give them a sign of when to take action. And this could technically resonate for either person because there seems to be blockages here that are bigger than your connection and whether you're on this side where you just don't know what the heck's going on and it feels very unfair and you're having to push, push, push or whether on, you're on that side where, again, you don't know what's going on with the people you love and you feel very confused so you're having to push towards them which means you're pulling away from this connection. It feels like there are other things at play here that are intervening and, and causing delays where divine intervention needs to help. And until that point, there is a feeling of, of being passive or having your hands tied, depending on which side of this <clears throat> fence you're sitting on. So group one, please, Spirit, can we get some more messages from their person? Group one, please, Spirit. I still don't have all the answers. So this person has information that they could share with you. I feel like it's a matter of when and how to speak and, and tell you the truth. Um, this person has gained clarity and I feel like they are clear, but there is still a feeling of being stuck here. Just because they have the information doesn't mean they know what to do with it or how to act upon it. I feel like they are still stuck. Still stuck is what I'm hearing. What else does this person want to say to group one? What do you want? Yeah, this person is confused, group one. Your person is very confused. They feel as though they've missed an opportunity with you. They feel as though there's so much um, illusion and some of this is so fantasy now. It feels like a fantasy in their head and they're having to understand or read between the lines. A spirit saying it's very blurry. This person's point of view of you and your feelings towards them is very blurry. They don't really know. They don't really know how you feel or what you want. <clears throat> I just want space. So there's that six of swords manifesting again in the reverse position. So your person is trying to heal something, but they're also wanting to come back. There is a feeling as though this communication situation needs to change but how do we do that? I feel like your person is craving clear, honest messages on honest truth is what they're saying. I just need the honest truth, good or bad. I need the honest truth because the truth for me is that I do feel a strong connection to you. The six of cups coming out. I know you from somewhere. This person feels like there's more to the situation than, um, excuse me, there's always a fly buzzing around my face at the moment. Um, they feel like there's more to this situation than has been explored. They want to they want to know more. They want to explore more. They want to understand more. I know you from somewhere. The Six of Cups, your history has to um, be honored is almost what they're saying. Like we have history together. We have history. I feel like this person has this desire to battle through whatever this situation is. They want you to know that they're trying to be strong. They're trying to really push through and they're trying to do the right thing by themselves as well as the connection. So this person does is trying to improve how they see themselves with ego here in the question because sometimes the strength card, when it comes out, it could be talking about this person being a little ego obsessed. But in your case, I feel like they just need to be more confident. I don't know. They could be either of these people, but your person wants you to know that they are trying to be more um, selfish in a good way so that they can take more action towards the things that they want and so that they can actually honor the things that they want and do the things that they want. So let's get some advice for you, group one. What's the advice from spirit, please? Spirit, what is the advice for group one in this situation? What is the advice for group one in this situation? Suppression of a star being by hands unworthy. Wowzers, look at this. And if you like this deck, I do have a link down below to it. It's an Iris Oracle deck. Love grows love in the reverse. Okay. So, yeah. Can I get one more card, please? Just to solidify. Sweet pea, that's too much. Just one more card, please, Spirit. Hello. We have dependency. Yeah, okay, so if you are the chaser over here, Spirit is saying it is time to pull your love back 
Because in this case, what you're trying to push into this connection is not love. It's a fear of losing this person. You giving, giving, giving is pushing more fear into this connection. Love does grow love, but in this case, it is not love that you're pushing in. And if you are the person who is running, there is still a feeling here of needing to focus on the love in your life, whether that is this connection or whether that is the issues that you need to address. I don't think that this person is being rude by needing to rectify whatever this, this emotional issue is. I think they actually really need to do that. I just think that this person's communication could be a lot clearer if this person has purposefully pulled back from the connection energetically and is is not actually needing to communicate you know like you're all in different situations so I feel like you can't whatever's going on here with the person that's pulling away they do need to deal with that situation because it does feel like it's an emotional issue that is just going to continue resurfacing or causing issues in this connection but in terms of the suppression of a star being by hands unworthy there is a feeling here of paying too much mind and energy towards people who just don't deserve um, your flavor, your source. Spirit saying they don't have the right taste buds for you. So this could be where a lot of this fear is stemming from. But this advice card is about understanding that your path is unique. You don't need to tick the boxes and the expectations of those around you, especially if the main reason that you really want this connection to work is because you're afraid of of um, turning a certain age and being alone for the rest of your life. There is a feeling here of something um, having more power over this connection than necessary. And it has to do with the opinions of others and a societal expectation that has been placed upon you. The suppression of a star being indicates that you are a very unique person on a unique journey and that your healing for yourself should be enough to inspire others to do the same for themselves. But instead of being able to honor your journey by honoring your healing journey, you feeling suppressed by the words, actions, or opinions of people who have no right intervening because they do not clearly understand your individual journey. So whether you're over here or over there, Spirit's saying be careful about the weight of people's words and how much um, power you let them hold over you, whether they're saying things to you about your current life circumstances or the connection that you share with this person. Are they opinions and suggestions coming from someone who's unworthy of having that much power over you? Now, dependency is really saying it all. There is an imbalance in this connection. And person A is very dependent on person B's attention right now. Person B simply cannot give person A that attention. And person B is feeling a lot of pressure, a lot of, like, they feel, almost feel like they've betrayed person A for pulling away. So there is a feeling here of needing to understand how this connection may be a little bit imbalanced and how there may be a dependent energy here between the two of you of, of needing certain unrealistic expectations or unrealistic things from each other. I need you to do this, do this, do this. Otherwise, I feel like you're going to abandon me or I feel like I'm going to lose you forever or I feel like you're just pulling away and you're going to find somebody else and I'm going to lose you. So it just feels like we do need to kind of check ourselves in this situation because there is an undercurrent of dependency here that, again, is, is pushing more fear into this connection rather than love because it is very conditional and it is coming from a fear of, of things not happening um, rather than this idea of, well, actually, this needs to happen right now. Everything is moving exactly as it needs to. Um, the universe is is... I'm in alignment, you know, the universe is, is powering through and I'm in alignment with that source energy too. So there is a feeling of, of just checking where you're at here. Are you being a bit too push or pull here to the point where you're trying to force certain things to happen rather than allowing the situation to unfold organically? Because I do see that this person's intentions are to come back with confidence. And obviously this person's intentions are to have um, fire in this connection and a way forward together. So as long as you're back in that alignment with source energy, there is both equal reciprocated energy there that just needs to be purified 
um, by clearing away that fear of losing each other or that fear of leaving someone behind for the sake of needing to solve this emotional issue. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys. That has been the advice, message cards, as well as the truth of this connection. I hope it was helpful. I hope it wasn't too confusing for you. Remember, this is a general reading, so take what resonates. Do not let the rest take from you. And I shall see you in a, another video. Thank you. Oh, before I go, actually, you know what I need to do? I need to take a quick second to thank your guides, my guides, and our spiritual teams. I can't go that high today. My, and our spiritual teams. <laughs> for helping me channel the messages today and for keeping me safe while doing so. Thank you for all of your support. I'll see you in another video. Bye. Hi, group two and welcome. If you guys chose the number two pool accessory over here, as well as the card that says, I am in perfect balance, then this is going to be your reading. So group two, today we're asking spirit, what is the truth of your connection? I'm going to leave you a little thingamabobs over there. Um, we're going to start with a person A's point of view, and we're also going to be getting person B's point of view. So as I mentioned in the intro, you just got to take which side resonates most for you, and the other person is obviously who your person's opinion is so let's start with person a on the left over here what is person a's truth excuse me when it comes to this connection what is the truth of this connection from person a's perspective spirit what is the truth of this connection from person a's perspective what is the truth of this connection from person A's perspective? We have the two of pentacles in the reverse position. We also have the nine of swords in the reverse position. Wow. One more card, please. What is the truth from person A's perspective? We have the six of swords. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> I like that rainbow imagery. That's beautiful. Can I clarify the two of pentacles, please, spirit? Oh, hello. We have the nine of pentacles. Okay. Not bad. Can I clarify the nine of swords, please, spirit? What is the truth of this connection? We have the lover's card in the upright. Beautiful. And what about the Six of Swords, please, Spirit? We have Justice as well. Excellent. Let's have a look at your bottom deck energy now, group two. Bottom deck energy is the Five of Wands. So interesting. Person A's point of view is, is very much about breaking through. Um, it, it's, it's like at the moment, this connection is, is not doing great. Um, person A's point of view is that this connection could change, which is a, a big ask because I feel like it implies that someone has to lose something in order for this change to be successful. But person A feels that if this connection could restructure and could um, be viewed at in a different way, like if, if somebody made more effort or if more time was allocated, this connection would be successful. Person A feels like this connection is very significant. Person A feels like this is their person in terms of this is someone that they could get married to, they could have a serious future with. Person A does, does feel like this connection needs to change, though, in order for that to happen. Something has to move. Something has to get out of the equation so that balance can be restored here, which makes sense because the affirmation card is, I am in perfect balance. I see person A identifying issues around spending enough time. It feels like person A feel, wants more meaningful conversations and wants more time together. Person A is seeing that the situation in order to be successful, needs to be restructured. And I see that with the Nine of Pentacles and the Two of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles, it almost feels like this person's looking at the situation as um, we're not secure right now. Like one of us is is needing to put more effort in or one of us is really needing to um, be more transparent about their baggage. It feels like person A is concerned about person B's baggage and not in a bad way, not in a judgmental way, although we do have 
a lot of judging energy <laughs> so I don't see this as like I'm judging you I see this as well if we want this to work either you got to be more honest and open about what your baggage is or like you have to cut that baggage loose and and keep moving forward with me the main goal here from person a's point of view is that they want the connection to keep moving forward person a really wants things to work out and i see that they're really wanting meaningful communication here communication is very important to person a person a has a clear idea has a clear understanding of what they want and they want to convey that to person b if they haven't already they really want to have a serious conversation because they're hoping that person b can also be serious and and tell them the truth um, I feel like person A is in a very honest, authentic situation in terms of they're really wanting to just lay it all on the table and be honest and open. I don't think that this is without fear, though. Person A is obviously very afraid that person B may not be up to the task at hand or that person B may, may not want to do this right now. It feels like person A could be very concerned about um, person B's work or home situation, especially if person B is married to their job or, or has children. It feels like there are other priorities in person B's life, and person A is very worried that person B will choose those priorities over person A. I do see that there needs to be a change in the energy here though because it's it's hitting a point where person A doesn't know how much longer they can continue doing it like this. Once they've seen the truth, they can't go back to what was. So as much as they see a future with person B, they're very aware of their their um worth and they're not going to compromise that just because this is all that they can get you know person a is is putting down the hard line the person a is coming from a very balanced side of i have i'm very clearly aware of what like i want with you but i'm also just not going to be someone that you can walk all over excuse me so random i've been yawning a lot in readings i don't know why i apologize um it does feel like person A is, is just like, I know my boundaries and it's not a matter of you aren't fulfilling my expectations. It's a matter of you're not honoring my worth. So if person A doesn't have that, it feels like person A is, is going to have to start looking elsewhere. Um, that's a worst case scenario though. Person A isn't genuinely there yet, but person A feels like they have to entertain that idea in the peripheral of their mind you know so let's see where person b is at now person b spirit what is person b's truth what what is the truth of this connection from person b's perspective we have the ten of swords reverse they feel betrayed okay why do you feel betrayed person b oh they've been put in a hard spot we got two twos out here. The two of pentacles is coming out first. And then we also have the two of wands. So person B has to make some tough decisions. And person B is afraid that if they settle into this, they may lose something that they're yet to gain. It feels like this is that person that's afraid of like settling down. You know, like they, they want to look at all their options. They want to know what other fish are out there in the sea. Um... I don't mean to downplay or minimize the situation either. I'm just using metaphors that work. Okay, what else is the truth of this connection from person B's perspective, spirit? What is the truth of this connection from person B's perspective? What's the truth of this connection? We have temperance showing up as a blockage. Okay, we're going to take it upright for now, though. There is hope here. Oof. We also have the king of wands showing up as a blockage. It was technically reversed. But it just feels like frustration more than anything. It's not supposed to be a complete reversal. Mm. What about the two of wands? What is person B's perspective? We have the nine of wands reverse. Yeah, person B is hella frustrated. Person B feels like their hands are tied behind their back, like they're being forced to do something that they're not entirely comfortable with. We have judgment at the bottom here. But the truth is they can't ignore the truth of the situation anymore person b is having to look at things very realistically and and they're very much aware of the fact that this connection needs to change person b for judgment to be here is is like you know what <laughs> you're right but i'm still needing to adjust with the fact that that's the truth and you are right 
person B is still, it's not that they're in denial, they're open to the truth, but it's like they're in shock. You know, it's like they're in shock. They just heard the most devastatingly honest information and they're in shock. Person B is at a point where they're having to pull things away that they had previously chosen to focus on. Now, this could be a change of habits. This could be a change of mentality. This could be a complete change of character. They feel like it's very painful for them. It's uncomfortable. They feel almost naked, but they're willing to do this for the connection because what losing that is is almost worse. I feel like person B's perspective is that it's going to take them a lot more. It's going to cost them a lot more pain than it will you to be able to make this connection work. Person B is seeing it as either they continue doing this, even though it will hurt, or they try to take the swords out and change, but that will hurt too. It's like the swords have been in this person's back. These opinions, these behaviors, these habits have been with this person for so long that it's become a part of them. And, and losing those swords is almost as painful as putting them there in the first place. So it's not that they're not willing to try, but it is very difficult for them to do this. And I see with temperance that they honestly, they, they feel very optimistic and hopeful about what your connection could be. Um, there's just that price. Like at what price is what they're telling me? Like at what price? It feels like they have to really... Um, they're seeing that they have to really sacrifice something here in order for this connection to work. We have the two of pentacles reversed twice. So making room for each other in each other's lives is not easy. And you're both acknowledging that, but in different ways. Person B is acknowledging that it would require them to almost lose a part of their dignity, which is interesting. They feel like they have to lose part of their status or how others see them. And you're looking at it as there's too many people involved in this situation. Like in order for us to have a secure, stable future and, and connection, you need to start like taking more, making more effort and, and, and putting more into this relationship. But they're looking at it as, well, I'm losing some dignity. It's almost like they're a lad's lad and they're afraid of how the lads will view them. You know, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Just again, a metaphor. I'm not trying to label anybody's gender or anything, but they're very um, concerned about losing their dignity and, and coming across as someone who who's, who's compromised, who's um, lost the pants in the relationship, you know. I also think that this person is very frustrated because they do feel like they've been put in a, between a rock and a hard place here. Either way, they get hurt and either way, they're not very comfortable with the action that is being asked of them. I see that this person with the two of wands, though, they're, they're, they're hoping that if they do choose to go with um, what you're implying or what you're wanting from them, they do hope that they're not going to miss out on something that they'll later regret. It feels like you're calling for them to do something that they're not quite sure if they're ready to compromise yet. Um, there's only one true path here, but this person is very attached to, well, what if I lose the other path? What if I lose the other option? It's like either this person is very attached to who they currently are or who they were before this situation escalated, you know? It's like they're still attached to who they were before they met you type of feeling. And with the Nine of Wands reversed, I do see it as this person's trying to let their guards down. They're trying to change in a helpful way. They're trying to be less stubborn. They're trying to be more open. And they're trying to reduce the amount of friction here on their side but it is very difficult for them and I feel it is an ongoing process like I think this is just one of those people that are very stubborn in life and they they are who they are and they don't usually change much you know the nine of wands reverse tells me that they are trying to let certain barriers down they're trying to reconsider certain ways that they have been investing energy into this connection and into their own life I do feel like this person is struggling to take accountability, though, for how their energy has has contributed certain friction to this current issue. It's like they're seeing you as the person that's putting them in this position. They don't understand that actually, like, they need to be accountable for this relationship as well and for the healthy growth of this relationship as well. They are still in shock, though. So what we're depicting here, and they, they, look at this fly. Can you please, please leave, please? There's a world out there to explore. We don't need to hang around these cards. Um, I feel like 
they are in shock at the moment. So this is their truth at the moment, but it could change. You know, the, the idea of shock is that it's temporary. It's not supposed to last. So fingers crossed. This isn't a permanent energy, this permanent feeling of, of shock. Let's get some channeled messages from the person now, regardless of whether you, you see yourself as person A or person B. Let's see what your person group two wants to say to you. What does group two's person want to say to them? We have, my life started when I met you. <laughs> I knew it. This is my two of cups reversed. It feels like it stopped. They feel like you're not able to see eye to eye. They feel like you both have crossed desires. Like you're really, they feel like you're both at opposite ends of the table right now. And a food fight is about to start. You know, they just feel like you're not seeing eye to eye. Yeah, they feel like someone in this connection is being very selfish. Um, they also feel like this connection is, like, in terms of, like, what you're asking is a lot. It's, it feels like the buying price is very high. So it's very interesting. Group 2, please, Spirit. What is the truth of this connection? Yeah, they're not very sure about what you've recently said to them. If you've said something to them recently or if, you've, if you're thinking about it, they're very unsure. They're very unsure about what you've said here. There's an idea that's not new, but they haven't been able to take action upon it because they just don't know if they're ready or if they want to. With the Ten of Pentacles in the upright position, there is this feeling as though like you are my future though, but I don't know if I can do that. It's that meatloaf song. I would do anything for love. I can't sing like this. But I won't do that. Oh, bless Meatloaf. I love it when Meatloaf comes into the readings. Group 2, please, Spirit. What else would this person say? <laughs> Sorry, but look at this. Look how stubborn they are. Look how stubborn they are. You are wrong. You are wrong. You're my everything, but you're wrong. <laughs> we start and end this line with the same message. We can't see eye to eye. You are wrong. This person is very stubborn. What else do they want to say to Group 2, please, Spirit? What else does this person want to say to group two? Yeah, okay, so this is interesting. They they are identifying like a dependency in this connection and the need to recalibrate and separate in the sense of like maybe there's too much fixation on, on, on each other right now. I feel like this person is trying to wean themselves off you as well. They may have been very addicted to you. I also feel like this person is trying to stay optimistic. So they're on the fence. We've channeled their energy at a time where they're to, they're umming and ahhing. They're toing and froing. It's like, yes... But like, I also feel that an aspect of this is wrong. So I think that on one hand, they are ready. But on the other hand, they, they want it to happen for the right reasons. Like you're both aware of the fact that your connection needs to change. And in order to do that, certain things have to be done. And it feels like person B is very afraid of, of um, losing so much. Whereas person A is more so afraid of losing the connection because they're aware of their worth and they're able to look at the situation in a more objective way. But person A is struggling to, to take that accountability and to absorb that awareness. Group two, please, spirit. Yeah, there is a false start here. So this person, it's not that they don't want a fresh start with you, but it's like they're saying, why do we need to change? <laughs> Ace of Wands reversed. We don't need to light that match again. The match is gone out. Why do we need to change? What does group two's person want to say to them? It depends which side of the fence you stand on. If you could, if you, I see yourself as person B, person A's message with this card is I want a fresh start. It's time. We need a rebirth in this connection. We need to reconcile the energy. We need to really ramp things up and, and take this more seriously this time. If you identify as person A, then person B's message is why do we need to change? Now, the other card that I have is the Eight of Cups. I left because you told me to. So I feel like regardless of person A or B, the Eight of Cups is saying that we're, we're in a bit of a cycle here. We can't continue going like this. So we have to move forward. But what are we leaving behind? That's the big question. Either your person A here and you move forward leaving this person behind because they're too stubborn to change or your person B here and you're having to leave this person behind because you're too stubborn to change. Whatever it is, your person group two is saying that in order for our connection to work, I ha we have to leave something behind and I know that 
but it's very difficult. It's very painful. And I'm trying to figure out when and what I want in terms of like when I want to do it and, and what I want to do, because this person is, is trying to delay the situation for as long as possible. But I feel like this person's not having it. This person's like, you know what? No, I'm not waiting. Like I need to have this serious conversation with you and I need your serious answer. Bottom deck energy is love me. So don't, so don't get it twisted just because there's confliction here. And just because there's a lot of, um, Toing and froing doesn't mean that the love isn't there and it doesn't mean that it's 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 the end of the world. There's there's so much hope on both sides, but there's also the truth of the situation right now on this on either sides in terms of the blockages. So let's see what spirit has to say. Let's get some advice from spirit, please. What is the advice for group two, please, spirit? What is the advice for group two? We have, huh? Oh, calm, calm within transformation. The lowercase L tripped me out. I was like, is that an I? What is came? <laughs> calm within transformation is reversed. Okay, the number 12. Yeah, that makes sense. Holy heck. Okay, I'm going to get two more cards at least. What is the advice from Spirit, please? Spirit, what's the advice for group two? Body as a house. Ooh, um, I love this deck. I have a link to it down below if you would like to have a look at this deck or other decks on Tarot's deck. What else, please, Spirit? What else? What other advice do you have for group two? Thank you. Ungrateful daughter and earthly mother. Wow. This reminds me of a fable we have in our culture. It's like a legend of like the mother who would give and give and give to her son. And then one day her son, it was like a really stormy day and her son got a craving for a specific type of fruit that only grew at one part of the island. So their mother left the house and the son insisted on going because he didn't trust the mother would get the right fruit. So the son went with the mother. The mother was carrying the son on her back. The winds were raging, rain was pouring. They finally make it to that side of the island and the tree, the fruit tree is on the top of a hill and with the way that the wind is blowing the hill, the tree starting to like bow over the hill and the fruit, the only fruit that's left on that tree is one that's on the furthest branch over the hill. So the boy in his selfishness is like continually just putting that pressure on the mother like you have to give me that fruit, give me that fruit or I'll cry for the rest of my life. Oh, you're not my mother if you don't care for me, if you don't get me that fruit. And then the mother does it with out of the goodness of her heart. The mother's like, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right, I'll do it. And it, like her heart's breaking because she's not silly. She's not stupid. She knows like if I get that fruit, I'm going to die. So she climbs the tree and she's constantly like looking back at her son, like hoping that he's going to change his mind and he keeps pushing her to go, like, keep going, you're nearly there, get me my fruit. And, like, the weather just starts to get even more, I want to say rancid, just crazy. The fable is that eventually she gets the fruit, manages to throw it to him, but she does, she falls into the water. And in our culture, when you, if you pass at sea, your body turns into a rock. So her body fell into the water she passed and it became this rock that's still there at the island today and the son cried and cried and cried and tried to throw the fruit back into the water and asked for his mother to come back to him but then the rock formed and he just knew like oh my gosh well I got what I wanted but at what cost so very interesting but that's what this card is telling me is that an ungrateful daughter and an earthly mother so it's different it's similar but it's different for your case well in your case the number seven here is just asking for you regardless of whether you're person a or b to take time to understand what you truly want so that you're not compromising the essence of of this connection you know there's always going to be challenges in every connection however serious or significant they are the idea here is to get back in tune with with the overall meaning like why why is this person so important to you why do you really want them in your life why do you really want a future with them what matters to you 
There's a feeling as though you are going to be able to connect with divine as well if you take this time to really think about that. And it's going to help you understand what you need to do. It may not be what you want, but it's going to help you understand what you need to do. Now, over here with body as a house, spirit's advice is to honor your vessel in this case. So there is a feeling here as though your vessel isn't just your, your body, but also your home, your space, your physical, your physicality is what they're saying. So this is an under this is um a message about boundaries and having healthy boundaries. Because in your case, there is someone who is feeling as though their boundaries are being compromised, and the other person is feeling as though their boundaries are healthy. So Regardless of which person you are, spirit is, is really calling for you to understand your physical boundaries better and to understand how they may be helpful or unhelpful when translated towards your wants and your needs. Are certain boundaries that you have imposed um, actually infringing upon your needs? And it's not to say that either person is right or wrong in this equation. It's just to say that there does need to be an understanding of how something in this situation, something physical, is also causing a blockage. Whether that's a physical boundary or whether that's a physical like, oh, I just, I need this for myself. I need, I need, I need it. And actually, I feel like that ties into the other card. Well, do you need it? Why do you want it in the first place? Now, over here with calm within transformation, this card is reversed because there is a stubbornness to both of your energies, especially person B, but both of you are failing to see this situation in a clear way. Both of you are needing to absorb and appreciate your circumstances through the eyes of each other. You're very self-aware if you're person A, and even if you're person B, you're at a point where you clearly both know what you want, but I feel like in this situation, you don't really know what you need. And that situation with this card, it's, it's asking for you to look at this situation clearly without your attachment to, or without being emotionally invested to being right or to needing to be the one who is right. Like if I were to put myself in person B's shoes, can I at least, like without admitting that they're right and I'm wrong, can I at least appreciate that this is a big ask and that they are going through a lot right now. <laughs> their little world is being forced to expand exponentially and it's beyond their comfort zone and it feels like it's very confronting and it's very shocking. And if I were person B, I need to remove myself from my own emotions, my own desire to be right and how hurt I feel in order to appreciate that person A has had a lot, a lot of courage to be able to come forward and talk to me about this big issue because they love me, because they want me, because they don't want to lose me. If I was person B, I'd be looking at person A like, oh my gosh, okay, I can see what they want, but I need to convey to them how much this hurts. I need to talk to person A and tell them that I'm not coping with their expectations. So there is this feeling of needing to see the situation through each other's eyes to better understand why this is such a difficult situation for both of you. And that is your advice from Spirit Group 2. I hope this was a helpful reading. I'm going to wrap it up there and take a quick second to thank your guides, my guides, and our spiritual teams for helping me channel today's messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. I hope you are staying safe wherever you are in this tumultuous world. Please look after yourselves and your loved ones. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting me today, and I shall see you in another video. Bye! Hi group three and welcome. If you guys chose this little pool accessory, the number 13, if anybody knows what this is, please let me know. I have no idea. It reminds me of those floaters that you use on like a fishing lines, you know, and then I turned them all over and I was like, wait, there's numbers on here. What are they for? <laughs> So anyway, if you chose this one, then this is going to be your group. We also have the card over here that says, I'm at, I am at home in my body. So we're going to keep your card up here with your little number and see how that holds relevance in your reading, in your reading, in your reading. <laughs>
Now, we're doing a what is the truth of your connection reading, looking at person A and person B, aka you versus them. So if you skip the intro, I did say to just kind of um, stay open-minded to both energies and see which one you think you are in terms of person A, person B. Because in the past, when I've done a you versus them reading, I've had people turn around and say, actually, I was them <laughs> in that reading, not you. So take whichever side resonates the most. We're going to start with person A. So group three, please, spirit. What is person A's truth or what is person A's perception of what the truth in this connection is? What is person A's perception of what the truth of this connection is? So... We have the tower over here. Okay, interesting. Big, big fiery energy. We have, speaking of big fiery energy, we have the Son of Wands also coming out. Hmm. What is person A's truth in this connection, Spirit? What is their perception of the truth of this connection? We also have the Ace of Swords, speaking of truth. Wow, okay. Person A is here. Person A is showing up and is like, you know what? Yes, thank you for channeling my energy because I've been needing to say some things and I need to start saying them to this person. So can we clarify the tower, please, Spirit? We have the Daughter of Pentacles coming out. Can we clarify the Son of Wands, please, Spirit? What is Person A's truth? We have the Seven of Cups reversed. Yeah, they've, they've seen the light recently. This person is very sure. They're seeing the truth for what it is. What about the Ace of Swords? What is Person A's truth in this situation, Spirit? What, how do they see this, this, this connection? What is Person A's perception of the truth of this connection? We have the Eight of Wands, which actually wanted to show itself to me in the upright, but I can feel the frustration behind this card, so I'm going to keep it reversed. Bottom deck energy is the Death card, so there's our number 13. I had a feeling the Death card would come out in your reading. Okay, so... That makes a lot of sense. Person A is in an energy of wanting transformation, not change, okay? It's just about accepting the past for what it is, being able to shed more light on present circumstances by taking more accountability. I feel like person A it doesn't want to play the blame game here. Person A is like, it's nobody's fault, but we do need to start being honest with each other in order for a, a, a true, honest transformation to happen. I feel that person A has separated their feelings from this present moment and they're just focusing on the truth. So person A's point of view of your connection is that things are starting to really change. Um, from their point of view, it feels like the lightning has finally struck them. You know, they've, they've got their clarity. They're seeing clearly. They're finally understanding what this all means and what they need to do. And it feels like it's left them feeling very much out of their depths. With the Daughter of Pentacles being down here, this person is not entirely confident that they have the right experience or the right tools at hand to be able to live up to the journey ahead or to be able to complete the task at hand, but they're going to do their best. This person is showing up like ambitious and, and fresh and, you know, they, they've, they've eaten their breakfast. They're like, okay, I don't know if I'm actually able to, but I will do my best. You know, like I may be lacking in ability or experience, but I'm here. I'm, I'm ready to work and I'm ready to do this. So they're seeing this connection as something that is a little bit intimidating. It's a little bit intimidating, but there needs to be acceptance on their side and there needs to be a level of responsibility to continue to feed energy into it. So person A is looking at this connection as something that has recently had a massive upheaval. Um, something has been brought to the light, but it's happened in a way where something else has been destroyed with the tower here. Um, it's happened in a way where we can't keep... Like what we thought we wanted or what we thought was happening was actually not what was happening. They feel like they've been struck by the truth to lightning. And with the Son of Wands and the Seven of Cups reversed, that just amplifies to me that they have their clarity and they want to act upon it 
there is a masculine energy here in this person's energy of, of really wanting to do things the right way this time, like really taking, learning from the past mistakes, learning from what was, what happened and, and moving forward so that those same mistakes aren't reenacted. But, and it's a small but, okay, it's not a big but. <laughs> um, it's not a big but, but it's a small but. Person A is not feeling confident in how to make this happen because they're a bit inexperienced. They're feeling a little bit overshadowed by the task at hand. The Son of Wands tells me that although their um, interests are to maintain truth in this connection and integrity by doing the right thing, they don't really know how to do that. So I see this manifesting in inconsistent energy or um, in someone who may come on very strong and may struggle to, to back that up with strong actions. So I see that although the intention is clear, um, there and the, and the passion is clear, like the drive to want to act upon those clear intentions is there. It's still a matter of, well, well how, <laughs> what, what and how, because when it comes to the material circumstances of this connection, it feels like that is still evolving. So whatever's happened in your connection, person A is trying to remain, um, what I want to say is like, capable like they're, they're trying to tell themselves like yeah I might not be experienced or well skilled but I'm still capable like I can still do this I can still learn that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to remain capable of learning and and healing through their past mistakes so that they can come out stronger and wiser and I see this with the ace of swords and the eight of wands I see this as someone who is very clear and what they want, a little unsure of how to do it though, and it's causing frustration. It's making them feel very frustrated about themselves and about the fact that their desires don't match their um, reality. When it comes to this connection, there there may be they may be struggling to talk to you about all of this. This could be an entirely internal process, especially with Scorpio here. This could be this person's energy. In the connection, but when it comes to their words, they may be struggling to tell you all of this. They may be struggling to articulate it in a way that you're able to clearly understand what they're going through. It feels like um, communication in general is, is very inconsistent at the moment because they're still technically picking up the rubble here from this tower moment and trying to understand how to rebuild their this connection in a in a way where it has a fair chance is what spirit's saying. So they're an interesting in an interesting situation. Slow and steady with this person. As much as they do have the action and the uh, the intention and the drive, um, I feel like they're not just going to want to do something that's going to make the situation worse and risk going through a tower moment all over again. So I would I would consider slow and steady with person A. The truth of this connection is that. They're trying to move in a pace that is comfortable and they feel like they're in over their heads and they may not be the most experienced person when it comes to your connection, but they're trying to do what they feel is best and they know very clearly what they want when it comes to you. They're very attracted to you. I think that this is someone who maybe wasn't expecting to develop very strong feelings for you in the beginning. It was just like a physical pull towards you. And now they're realizing like, okay, wow, there's actually a little bit more to this than I thought there was. Um, so I, I think it's, we're going to have to explore that, but how do I do that? Because now that I know this, I can't just keep doing what I was doing before. So that's where person A is at. Let's see what's going on with person B now. What is person B's perception of the truth in this connection? We have the Queen of Swords. Okay, interesting. What is person B's truth of this connection? What is person B's perception of the truth of this connection? Wow, look at person B over here with the death card as well, twice. You got the death card twice. Death is reversed in their side, though. What is person B's perception of the truth here? The Ten of Cups is showing up as a blockage. We're going to show it to ourselves as reversed, though. Can I clarify the Queen of Swords, please, Spirit? Wow, yeah. Okay. There's a very different energy on person B's side. I don't know what's going on with person A. I don't know if person A's been taking a long time to fix up this tower situation and to gain the confidence to be able to step towards this connection in the way that they want to. But person B's energy here is very different. Can we clarify the Ten of Cups reverse, please, Spirit? 
Yeah. Yeah, I feel like person A is very focused on person B, where person B has left the building, has left the chat. We have the Eight of Cups to confirm that. Person B has left the chat. Wow, literally. Look at the snake watching her. The snake's like, where? I'm focused now. I'm here now. I see you now. And person B's like, I'm <laughs> looking at other things. Wow, look at that. It's not true, though. Oh, my days, my heart. I can relate. This this energy, Spirit's showing my own past to me to be able to convey this message. Anyway, let me grab my Amazon eye because I want to be very clear about person B. So listen, person B is focused on other things. Person B's eyes are set on the horizon and person B is very focused on improving their circumstances. With the Queen of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune, person B is like, you know what, listen, I'm just out here trying to get a bigger perspective on how to improve all areas of my life right now. And I'm really trying to do that by focusing on what I can control and turning my back against the things that I can't control. I feel like person B has purposefully turned their back on person A right now, which could even look like this person blocked person A, or this person has stopped talking to person A, has stopped posting when person A, um, in places where person A can see them. Like, it just feels like there's blockages here on purpose, because person B is like, I can't control person A. Person A is their own person, and if that's what they want to do to make them happy, then they can do that. I'm going to focus on what I can control. And I want to say that this isn't exactly the truth. The truth of this connection is that Person B is trying to sneak away because they think it's what's best, but they're still looking back and thinking about person A. Person B is pretending to be content with their five swords in hand, but they're still looking back, wishing and, and wondering if they should have gone and gotten those two extra swords. I feel like person B is, is, is trying to do this with the best intentions, but they're not actually happy, especially fly, please leave me alone. Why must you follow me around the whole house? Especially with the moon reversed here, as well as the king of all my days. No, person B is not happy. Person B is harboring their own secrets. And honestly, you know what person B wants? Person B just wants person A to, to just like force these secrets out of them. Person B has a lot that they have not told person A. And they're pretending like this is what they want, but I don't think it is. Person B is stuck in a bit of a cycle right now with the death card reversed, which is, is like this painful realization of, of betrayal. Either they feel betrayed by person A's actions in the past, or person B is also just going through the, the ropes of feeling betrayed by their own actions in the present. It's like this person is very much trying to be happy, but they're not fully appreciating how their actions are jeopardizing their happiness, especially with the Ten of Cups reversed and the Eight of Cups. It feels like person B is walking away from something that they in their heart know will make them very happy, but they've convinced their head that it won't. Their head has gone, oh, nah, that's not right. We can't do that. That's not, that's not going to make us happy. Keep walking. Leave it behind. Yeah, it was a fair run. You got 8 out of 10, but it wasn't the full 10. Keep walking. There's something here that person B is not being completely honest about, and it's their feelings. Person B is not being completely honest about how they feel about person A. Person B is looking at this as something that you could have, would have, should have happened, but it didn't, so we got to move forward, accept the betrayal, accept the feelings of, didn't we almost have it all, Whitney Houston? But... It just didn't happen. I feel like there's there's there is hope, but they're not wanting to look at that because it's like I'm sick of being baited with hope. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of sadness over here that this person suppresses. I'm sick of being baited with hope. I just want to focus on what's real. And what's real is this other stuff that they've got going on. Very cold. Person B is very cold. They're just focused on their hustle. And I, I want to say it's not even about money. It's about like just focusing on things that are bringing them good fortune, good energy, movement, direction, purpose. It feels like person B is focused on their purpose right now, which is a 
healthy distraction, but it also is a numbing distraction. It numbs them from their true feelings. Oh my gosh, holy heck. Let's get some channel messages, shall we? <laughs> oh, my heart. I'm going to drink some water. Wow. Is that a JoJo song? Too little, too late? Anyway, it's coming into my mind. Too little, too late. Da, 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 da. Na, 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 na. I don't know if that's the real melody, but too little, too late is what came into my mind. All right. So, oh, wait, excuse me. That's not my channel messages deck. How dare you? Let's get some channel messages, shall we, from your person. So the viewer, regardless of whether you're person A or B, we're getting messages for you, the viewer, from your person's perspective. Oh, yeah, this is a blockage. Emotions are twisted here, twisting and turning, your feelings are burning, you're breaking. You're breaking the girl is the original lyric from Red Hot Chili Peppers, but um, I don't want to use genders, just in case. I think there is a ama major emotional blockage here in terms of what both of you want. Your person is very confused because their heart wants one thing, but their head is telling them the other thing. Their head is saying, stop hurting yourself. Stop betraying yourself. Stop holding hope for no reason. This tough cycle has to end and it will end. But their heart is telling them that they're leaving something very important behind by moving forward. Very confusing. And then over here, this person is so clear. They're like, this is it. I know now. I just don't know what to do. I know, but I don't know what to do. So really, this is a question saying, well, what do you want? On both ends, regardless of whether you're A or B, what do you want? Clarify that within your heart space and keep that heart-based intention open. Don't close it off, regardless of who you are, A or B, don't close it off. And I feel like that's that's your person's message right now. They're saying that to you, but I feel like they're, it's a beg to themselves, if, if regardless of which side as well. So what does this person want to say to group three, please, Spirit? Wrongful advice, okay. So this person is trying to get themselves out of a situation that once kept them confined. I feel like they're trying to be a bit of a free spirit here. Wrongful advice is a feeling as though you've listened to the wrong source and you've really directed, like, this isn't just like, oh, yeah, somebody told me to wear red and I found out that that's actually offensive today because it's a memory remembrance day or, you know, it's not like a, a little mishap. When this card comes out, it tells me that someone has built their whole future around an idea that is completely wrong. So this tells me that this person, they're trying to say to you, group three, I accidentally built my whole present or my whole future around something that is, is wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. And I know now, I know the truth now. Group three, please, spirit. Well, part of me at least knows the truth now. Yeah, part of me knows the truth now. The seven of cups reversed again. I just dream and wish for everything. I don't want everything. Oh, Stop, I'm going to cry. I don't have tissues today. I'm hearing that song. Some people want diamond rings, but I just want everything. No, excuse me. I don't want everything if I ain't got you, baby. My voice is so not here, but that song. Some people want diamond rings, but I don't want everything if I ain't got you, baby. Oh, stop. Group three, please, spirit. What do they want to say to, excuse me, what does this person want to say to group three? Yeah, okay. Oh, 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 stop. It's too much. Stop. Yeah, yeah, there, there it is. I chose to walk away because if I followed you, I could have lost everything. And then I found out that everything, quotation marks, everything doesn't mean anything. If I ain't got you, baby, stop it. They are healing and they're coming out of a period of pain to a point where they're feeling like they can see clearly now. Um, oh. Their message to you, group three, and this may be from their higher self, depending on who we're looking at here. This person's more receptive. This person's very cold, but 
From their higher self, group three, your person wants you to know that they do want to first start with you. Your person wants you to know that the chemistry that they feel with you is still there. Even when you're not physically there, there's still an attraction there. There's still a desire there. There's still a big question mark of like, well, what could we create together? Imagine us together, they're saying. Imagine us together. I sense a free spirit within both of these people, especially with the Knight of Wands over here. And this person's really trying to be more like a free spirit, but they're not really because they're running. They're, they're turned. Anyway, maybe they both are, but anyway. We have I want you. So that's what they're telling you. I want you, group three. Do you even see me that way though? So there's there's the confusion. They're not confused about how they feel. They know how they feel. They're confused about what you actually have got, have got going on in your mind and in your heart. This person is unsure about how you see them. And this isn't just about um, emotions. Even though we're looking at the Seven of Cups reverse, this is about how you see them with your heart. Do you see them as a friend? Do you see them as a lover? Do you see them as a potential partner? Like, how do you, do you even see me in that way is the big question here. Oh, my gosh. I need to always remember to bring tissues with me because, oh, it's just so much emotion here. Group three, please, spill. Hello. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, nah. Okay, so they've turned their back on something recently that hasn't worked out. What, what is this spirit? What is this back-turning business? Everybody's turning their back in this connection. What is this back-turning business? Wait, okay, so they've uprooted themselves recently. They've pulled their resources away from unfertile soil because they thought that's where their future was, but it wasn't. Is this a whole family situation, Spirit? What are they? They might have changed jobs or moved home. Or they could have walked out of a relationship. Yeah, it could be a relationship for many of you. They just showed me the Three of Swords. Um, but it's because they were investing energy in the wrong things. They were putting energy towards things that didn't matter to them. It's because they were putting all this effort in and they weren't getting the results that they wanted. Wow. Profound. So proud of them. Good on you. Whoever you are, good on you. It takes a lot of courage to do that. Even if you see your truth, it doesn't mean that it's going to instantly fix your solution. You need to put actions into that. So that takes a lot of courage. Is there anything else that they want group three to know, spirit? What does this person want group three to know? Yeah, they're so fucking attracted to you. <laughs> Sorry for swearing, but they are very attracted to you. Make me want to do bad things. There's a risk here that they're considering doing. What is this risk? They want to take a risk towards you. Yeah, they want to take a risk towards you because they are afraid that at the end of the day, it's too late. Death is upright on their position because, uh, excuse me, excuse me, I'm channeling both your energies, but this person is, is, is at a point where it's like, you know what, this is a lot to lose. If this is what I could lose, that's a lot to lose. I don't know if I'm ready to do that. I don't know if I'm ready to let go. I don't know if I'm ready yet. I don't know if I'm at that point where I could happily turn my back and, and never know. So your bottom deck energy is I'm manifesting you from this person. So yeah, this person is has not truly given up. Whether those messages are from their higher self or from their conscious mind, this person is, is very intent. So that would be their conscious mind. This person is very distracted. In, in somewhat of a healthy way. So that would be their higher self connecting with you and saying like, this is, this is my truth. So let's get some advice from spirit. What is the advice for group three in this situation? Fire mother. Okay. Interesting. Cultivating some things here. That's the beautiful power of fire. It's destructive, but it clears the way so that new growth can start, can form. What is the Advice for group three, please, spirit. And what is the advice for group three? Cast your sacred symbols. Interesting. I thought that was the finger for a second. It's a finger, but I thought it was the rude finger. Um, advice for group three, please, spirit. Advice for group three, please. One more card. Advice for group three, please, spirit. Thank you. Your dreams are closer than you think. Wow, look at that. Ace of Cups. Reach, 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 reach. Your dreams are closer than you think. Bottom deck energy. Oh, 
I love this deck so much. I have a link to it down below if you would like to buy it for yourself. Afraid of the Dark, the number 58. Interesting. So your advice here from Spirit, <sighs> there's a lot of fire here between the two of you. There's there Honestly, there is. I just feel like somebody is awoken to the truth at a point where the other person has had to painfully let go. And the problem is that maybe neither of you are telling each other this. Maybe neither of you have communicated this clearly. Whatever your truth is, maybe you haven't actually conveyed that to the other person. And that's the first big blockage in this connection, the lack of communication, or at least the lack of clear, honest communication. Somebody's heart has checked out because they're just sick of waiting. And the other person is still dealing with a lot. Like, I don't want to downsize or, or minimize the amount of rubble here with the tower that person A is having to clear up right now. They don't have the easier end of the situation. They're still having to clear that. So the advice for you, whether you're A or B, is to do your healing. Whatever that is, with Fire Mother here, understand that you've got something that is worth cultivating because both of these people have passion in their lives right now. Person A feels passionately about the changes that they've been through and about this new opportunity to rebuild themselves. Person B feels passionately about their purpose. So whatever your passion is, foster that, protect that, honor that, and use that as your firm foundation towards your healing. And Moving forward from that advice, we also have cast your sacred symbols here. So the advice for you, group three, is to protect yourself from the things in the past that did distract you from what you truly wanted. The sacred symbols makes me think that you've gained awareness of what you want, whether you have it currently, whether you're actively trying to get it back, or whether you're actively trying to maintain it. There is an idea here that you know what you want and that you're aware of how maybe things in your past or, or certain patterns of behavior or people prevented you from, from getting that. Cast your sacred symbols is asking for you to protect yourself from that ongoing pattern so that it doesn't continue. However frustrating your current circumstances is, are, don't lose sight of why that awareness was so important in the first place. You know, understand that it is about continual effort here and understanding that this may be an ongoing cycle just because you're aware of it doesn't mean that it fixes the problem your actions will and you do have spirit support in this so the, it's not really um it's more of a warning this card saying just be careful not to slip back into those old patterns that were very much like self-sabotaging or just not very helpful to what you want um, towards what you actually want in this life. And that has to do with this card because you're so close here, whether it's fear that's standing in your way currently, whether it's um, just this idea of like it's useless to keep putting so much hope into the situation when I just lose every time, whatever it is, you're actually so close to getting what you want when it comes to love. You're so close to having your cup um, filled in terms of like, I see an opportunity here between the two of you and you're very, very close. So there is just these last little reminders here from spirit about honoring your purpose and using that passion that you have in your life as your foundation of, of, um, comfort and security that forges part of who you are. You're passionate about these things because it's in your nature to be, there's so much more to explore upon that. And there is so much more diversity there than you think you may feel like your purpose could be helping people or could be doing this. Maybe your, your, your purpose is to be self-employed or to do this or that. But there's so much more to that that is worth exploring. So honor that purpose, honor that passion and explore it in depth because it's going to be your saving grace in terms of your optimism and forging these new patterns in your life that are helpful to help you stay away from the things that weren't helpful, whether they're people, behavioral habits, something here is tempting you and spirit saying, please don't give in because you are so close to getting your dreams. You're so much more closer than you think. And it is this last minute fear of either putting all this effort in and losing or, or taking that step in the dark and, and not getting the answers that you want. It's that last minute fear that is standing in your way. And we know that fear does not grow love. 
This card shows up reversed when the situation is having too much fear put in. Love grows love. Fear grows fear. So spirit is just giving you those last minute reminders to help you get to that point of, of well, your dreams, basically, <laughs> to help you get to the crux of it all and what you've actually been working towards here. So that comes down to your communication style. Whichever side you're on, fear grows fear. Love grows love. Please be honest. Your truth and the communication that you both put into this will change everything. Whether you're afraid of hearing something that you don't like or you're afraid of not um, getting the outcome that you want. It, it is about being honest here and making sure that your honesty helps you get the most out of this situation because there could be an opportunity between the two of you to actually sit down and have an honest yarn, an honest talk and really share each other's truth from your perspective. And that will be completely dependent upon how you choose to continue fostering those helpful patterns with that passion that you have, protecting yourself from the unhelpful temptations and reminding yourself that your dreams are closer than you think. Group three, that's what I have for you, sweets. I'm going to take a quick second to thank your guides, my guides, and our spiritual teams for helping me channel today's messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. Thank you for tuning in. Whether you're seeing me for the first time or you're returning, I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your support. And I shall see you in another video. Bye.